You can type in the name of your favorite artist and get a station full of their biggest it's, uh, hits. And it's today. Yay. Just for you. Songs handpicked by real people, fellow music fans. As you thumb songs up or down, we personalize the station to fit you better. It's that easy. Type in the name of an artist and let us get to work. The easy to use app for music and radio. Download our free iHeartRadio app today. Baby spring salad mix? It's like summer, fall, and winter don't exist. It's spring all year round. So fresh. Super fresh baby spring salad mix. Kroger brand, where awesome meets affordable. Available at Kroger. Save big on Kroger brands and more at the digital coupon event. Download coupons at Kroger.com and use them up to five times in the same transaction. Save on select varieties. One pound Kroger cheese, $2.49 with card and digital coupon. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. Hi, I'm Scott Sloan. For new windows and doors, visit WindowsPlusCincinnati.com. All your favorite music, all your favorite stations, all free. That's iHeart Radio. All your favorite music. This is Rick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. Hi, this is Mick Jones of Foreigner on iHeart Radio. And yes, iHeart Radio is all your favorite stations, thousands of them. Yeah. days ago and uh, it had to be diverted to Akron because there was a, uh, a pet that was put on board that was supposed to go to Akron and not St. Louis so the plane went to Akron and dropped Fluffy off. This on the heels of a 10 year old German Shepherd who was uh, flown to Japan when he was supposed to go to Kansas. This on the heels of a French Bulldog that died on a Houston to New York flight after the flight attendant told the owner to put the dog in the overhead bin. And amazingly, all three of these were... United. United Airlines. Ken Jenkins is an aviation expert and uh, knows all about things flying, not just pets, and he joins us now here on News Radio 700 WLW. Ken, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm well, sir. How are you today? I'm, I'm doing, doing reasonably well. But I guess the headline here is if you've got a pet, uh, you probably don't want to fly United. Would that be a safe assumption? Well, I, I would think that the safe assumption is um, uh, yes. And two, do your homework before you um, before you travel with your pet. Um, United's really had, I mean, I was looking to your op opening in, in context of three things in a week really does not bode well for their pet policy, does it? It, it doesn't, and it, it leads me to believe, like when uh, the guy was dragged off the plane, I forget how many months ago, I, it just seems like there, there's something dysfunctional about the way that company is operating right now. And whatever policy it may be that they operate under, it's not filtering down to the rank and file. And I think any time you see that in any business or any company, uh, one would look directly to the top. Are they? I mean, what's going on inside of United that you know of that 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 may may be leading to all of this? Yeah, you know, and, and I, I think you hit the nail on the head. And it's interesting to step back. And as I've been watching this unfold, I've been in aviation for almost 40 years now. I've never heard ever once of a flight attendant asking um, or telling a passenger to put their their dog in the overhead compartment. I mean, that's one just poor judgment, obviously. And in and, and, and light of the, the other things that are going on, I would certainly step back and say, at a minimum, stop carrying packs. Figure out your processes and what's going on and what you can do to combat the, uh, the one, the publicity, but the instances that you're having. Today, thankfully, you and I as pastors have the ability to to research and find out as much as we need to about an airline and their pet carrying policy, of course, our charges and things of that nature. If you're going to charge $125 to carry a pet, then your procedure should live up to the charges that you're going to 
to, you know, to uh, charge someone. Yeah, well, I mean, and, it, we're, we're changing, Ken. I mean, the world is changing, right? I, I, I mean, 20 years ago, this wouldn't be a problem. But now we not only so, have service uh, animals, we have comfort. We have comfort tech. I'll send you $125 and, and if you bring this peacock on a plane. I mean, it's getting to the level of absurdity with, with some of this. And, I mean, if you can't, if you can't fly in, uh, for an hour and a half without your comfort pet, then maybe you need to drive. I'm just, I'm just saying it's service animals are one thing, but I need this, I need this chipmunk to make me feel better so I can get through a flight. I mean, a lot of it is boring and absurdity, isn't it? Well, I certainly would draw the line of peacock and, and a number of other animals. I, I remember seeing that clip in the, in the news as well. And, you know, a lot of the airlines have passed it back from that, and, and they're revising their service policy, or their, their policy on service pets or service animals. But these three examples that you gave, um, I believe one was um, a therapy dog yes. that, was being, that was being shipped in the cargo hold of the plane. Yes. So they, they were being brought on the plane um, to, to give some positive feedback to United. That, that at least they brought the dog back from Japan, the 10-year-old German Shepherd. Yes. Uh, and they did it in the style on a private jet. And you know what that had to cost. Yes. But if, if that's the case and you're going to take care of the animal, which was the right thing to do, step back and, and, and stop caring pets for a few days and streamline your policies and, and do a little bit of education at your station level with how you check, you know, check pets. Um, the other side of it is, you know, United is one of the largest carriers that flies um, pets. Um, so I think more than most airlines do, uh, uh, individually, United has a high rate of, of flying pets. So, when you look at year over year, like 2015, 16, and 17, they also had the highest number of, of deaths um, of any carrier. So, again, it's, it's one of those things just to step back and look at the airlines before we fire them. Well, it's such a great safety record. You, you've been in aviation for a long time, as you say. It's, such, it's a difficult business. It's a, it's a, it's a it service-based industry. It's a safety-first industry. And you only have to be wrong once. And if everything else that you've done is is completely forgotten, if not fred upon. And I'm not just talking about an air disaster. I'm talking about something that happens with a ticket agent at a counter, or they lose your bags, or th these things are extreme examples. But it's it's a different it's a difficult business to operate in. It, it's more difficult than any restaurant business where if you make a mistake, it's just a meal. I, I just wonder sometimes how the, these airlines do indeed de deal with it because there's so there's so many employees at so many different locations around the world that it only takes one to screw up and then all of a sudden the entire airline has a crisis. How do they deal with this? Stuff? I mean, what, what what is the process internally for dealing with these things? Well, and, uh, each airline is going to be different, certainly in how they, they address their processes. But one of the things that you do, in, in, in particularly in an aviation uh, in the aviation industry is to streamline the processes and educate your employees on what they are. So there's a high level of standardization. So if you, as an airline employee, move from one airport to another airport and transfer you know, from one city to another, it's easy to move into a new airport because the procedures are standardized across that airline system. So the, the, the procedures are the procedures are the procedures, so to speak. So in this case, why do we seem to have a higher number with this one airline, which means from, from an internal process, so we certainly want to do an evaluation and an audit of our processes and why people aren't able to put dogs on the right place. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that, that, that's pretty basic. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, why they're not able to do that. I think you're right. We're chatting with Ken Jenkins, aviation expert in light of three now uh, animals involved in, in on-air incidents in the last uh, in the last week. I think you're right. I think it's probably not a bad idea for them to stand back for 72 hours, evaluate what's going on, and then do some intensive training at the grassroots level so it doesn't happen again. But I guess my point was, that's this. Then there's something else. Then there's something else. And it sure. just leads me to believe that maybe United at the top has got has got some problems that maybe its shareholders need to take a hard look at. Because any, any publicity for an airline is bad publicity. Let's face it. You're not going to get great publicity for a plane taking off 
on time, getting to a gate on time safely and every bag shows up. That's that standard operating procedure that you're supposed to do all the time. I, I, I just sense that, that there's probably something that can be done immediately without having to, to shut down an entire airline, but immediately so that everybody's on the page, same page here within the week. Don't, don't you? I, I, I agree. And even if they do not stop it in terms of uh, transporting pets for a few days, the one thing that the one thing the airlines do quite well outside of moving oh, people well. from point A to point B is they measure every aspect of performance. Big bump. Whether it's the human performance in terms of customer service down to the, the processes and mechanisms that are mechanical and technological. So they have the ability, and they being the aviation industry, to, to really dissect, if you will, almost any aspect of their operation to find out where they're strong and where they're weak. And obviously right now they're, they're weak here, and they really need to do a little uh, self-introspection. By the way, are you a pilot? I am not. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask you why every pilot sounds the same when he gets on the two-way system on the airplane. They all sound the same. Is it, I mean, I don't know. Is there like a pilot god that everybody imitates? Uh, there's a laser. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I do know, it, it, and actually you're correct. Um, um, it's probably just uh, an announcer, you know, announcer class that they probably go through. I like announcer class. Huh. <laughs> there's an afterlife for me. I could be a pilot, pilot announcer instructor. I could do that. <laughs> Ken Jenkins, how do we find you if we need to find you? Got a website? What do you got? I, will, I do. It's Ken Jenkins, LLC.com. Ken, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Nice talking with you, Ken. You ever go on a flight and you hear the same thing? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll uh, be number three for takeoff. We'd like the uh, flight attendants to please, uh, <laughs> please be seated. And then you get into flight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just off our left is Lake Erie, where we, you know they all sound the same. Once in a while, I'd like to have a pilot come on and uh, on the two-way and say, "Hey, no, look at that at the left. Yeah, you know, Lake. I have no idea what that is, but compass says we're going in the right direction. Anybody need a drink?" Did you hear that once? Yeah, I heard cool. this once on a Southwest flight. Truth be told, slammed, the plane just slammed on the ground like that. I forget where we were flying it, but it just slammed on the ground. It was a real hard landing. And the flight attendant comes on and she says, Ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't the pilot's fault. That wasn't the co-pilot's fault. That was the asshole. Ha 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 John's has a special game day offer for all you Hoops fans. This season you'll get 50% off regular Oops. menu price pizzas all day long when UC or XU has a men's basketball game. Use promo code UC50 when the Bearcats play and XU50 for Xavier games. Only at PapaJohns.com. Whatever it is, better pizza, Papa John's. Offer valid during the 2017-2018 men's basketball season. Not valid with any oh, of the Prices, participation, and delivery area may vary. Tax Thank and delivery you. fee extra. Stadium Sports Bar and Grill of Oak Terra Park Gaming is Cincinnati Sports Bar. Catch every minute of your favorite college basketball games on over 50 HD TVs. From the Cinderella stories to slam dunks at the buzzer, the action never stops. At Stadium, the special and games people, visit OlterraPark.com. Don't forget to go back to Cincinnati.
their total quality logistics. We believe in offering our employees the best in benefits, and that is why we offer Delta Dental for our dental insurance. Delta Dental. We do dental. Better. Delta Dental OH.com. Damage from the shield. Call Clear Shield Auto Plan. It's a, it's a Twitter account. MLS transfers. MLS transfers. Go, and it dude. Tweeted out just a little while ago. What in the fuck are you doing? Me, Go. MLS will announce FC Cincinnati to the league next week. Asked how sure. Response back 99.9%. So that's not me saying that. That's God. MLS transfers. Fuck. Shit. That, uh, is, Balls. Is reporting that at this hour. Will it happen? Well, look. They're done with the West End. It, uh, I, I, we all know that. We all know that. I was told last night by someone who would know that the West End thing is finished. That it's not a ruse. It's not a, it's not a negotiating ploy at this point. They're done. It's down to Oakley and it's down to Newport. And Oakley uh, would appear to be the top choice. I, the, the Ohio side of the river has always been the top choice. Newport is a nice location. Newport's it a was fucking shit hole. The easiest deal that FC Cincinnati could do, but it was obvious that wasn't their first choice. And uh, I've been told that MLS is agnostic as to where a stadium would be built. And I was told that by someone who would know, someone I trust, and they are. They, they want it in an urban environment. Is Oakley an urban environment? No. Not, not per se. It, it's, it's not something or somewhere you can see the Cincinnati skyline. There's no question about that. 
but they did their due diligence. They made their deal on the West End, and it's, it's, it, it didn't happen. There were so many different and uh, so many vari variables on that on that West End, so many groups that, that they had to deal with, and at the end of it all, there was a significant number of people that didn't want that stadium built there, and they lived there. And look, if, if you live someplace, you should have that kind of voice. Oakley, to me, always seemed like the better of the two sites. It was easy on, easy off. You're by the, you're by the interstate. They're going to build the infrastructure there. The government is going to build the infrastructure there that you need for egress. We're going to get Todd Fortune's parking garage. That's going to go there. And uh, it's a full body of land that if the stadium wasn't built there, something else was going to go in there and create traffic problems 365 days a year, not just 40 or so days a year. So Oakley always made, to me, more sense. And there's other land that they can buy up around there if indeed land development is part of this gambit. It has to be. You're laying out $250 million. To Made it. I love you.